you had enough coffee? Or jumping around in the morning? There's some energy, but maybe it will go up during the day. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, good morning. Welcome in the Building Your Own DXP, Digital Experience Platform. Um, we're not going to explain what that means, eh? but um, we're getting, getting started with Drupal and Motic. You're all here for Drupal, uh, DrupalCon, but Motic might be a new concept or a new uh, tool. Um, we'll explain um, what it is. My name is Nick Wienhoff. Um, since this week, I work for GitLab, but I've been in the Drupal community for 15 years. Um, and my previous job, I did a lot of Drupal and Motic integrations uh, all together. And uh, all right, Ruth. Yeah, my name is Ruth Cheesley. I'm project lead for Mortic, and I work at Acquia, who support me doing that full time. Uh, prior to this, I have been a contributor in open source projects for about 15 years, mostly Joomla. I used to run a Joomla full service agency uh, doing Joomla websites with Mortic integrated for seven years, and then moved more into community management and open source full time. So, yeah. Um, maybe also a heads up, this is an um, interactive session workshop, as in like a the format is uh, a workshop. We will go over uh, this agenda, but the informative part, as in like you sit and we talk, that's quite small. Um, so I would advise you to take your laptop if you can uh, in a bit, and then we'll go through these instructions, but you can also just watch what's going on in, uh, in that sense. So I'll show you a little demo of Mautic and Drupal in action. Um, and then also, like, uh, why should you do this? Why should you personalize? Uh, personalization is, um, an, in a very simple form as well, um, a form on the website that already maybe has your name pre-filled. Uh, that's like already like a good form of personalization, something <coughs> that you can do with Mautic in, in a way. And then uh, we have the workshop. That's going to be the majority of this session. And then uh, in closing, and then we'll give you some homework uh, for next year. Yeah, great. So to start off with, we'll just talk a bit about why you would personalize. Oh no, they're the wrong way around. We'll do the demo first. <laughs> and this will take you through what it will look like, or what we're trying to achieve. But it's what we're able to show you in this time we have is actually quite a small subset of what you can do with Drupal and Mautic. So. So what you see here is the Umami demo. You might have seen the Umami demo before uh, with uh, all these recipes. Um, what we did and what we're going to do in this workshop is this form. There's going to be like a small form um, in here. And uh, we can fill in yeah, whatever. And then we're going to fill in our food preferences so that we can subscribe to a newsletter that gives me personalized newsletters based on my food preferences. Uh, so send me. Oh, I need to do some odds. Okay, so fine, thank you for signing up. What does that mean in Mautic itself? You will see that there is uh, contacts. Uh, you can see that my contact now got added in Mautic, um, so we'll go through those steps. Um, there will also be um, a part where, how do you create that form? Uh, the form is not in Drupal, it's in Mautic. Um, and then ultimately as well, like what does that newsletter campaign look like? And um, we're going to show you how to build, um, oh, sorry, let me launch it again, how to build a campaign like this. So this is interactive, as in like if someone subscribes to the newsletter form, then if vegan is selected, make sure that on the profile of that person, it says like preference vegan, um, but also put it into the newsletter list. Uh, and then the newsletter can be configured as such so that you can send to this person vegan recipes and to maybe other uh, persons gluten-free recipes. So that's more or less the, the context of the uh, workshop that we're going to do together. Okay, so why bother personalizing? There's lots of information about this out there, but ultimately through the customer journey they go through different stages with you. In those stages, they're expecting more from you as a brand because you know more about them. You might ha they might have subscribed to the newsletter, but you're still showing them boxes to subscribe to the newsletter when they already have. They may have already purchased the product from you, for example, but then when you send out your newsletter, you're sending them offers for the product they just bought, which is so annoying when you've just bought it like a week ago and you get 20% off. 
So customers are expecting much more from brands and from companies throughout this life cycle. And personalization helps you to deliver that throughout all the different places that you interact with your customers. And Mortic can help you with a lot of this. And integrated with Drupal, you can do even more. There are other things you can do to take it even further. But this, what we're talking about today, is like the basic walk step of the walk, uh, uh, crawl, walk, run. Sorry, it's the crawl step of the crawl, walk, run. So it traditionally, what's going on? Here we go. It's just taking a long time. Uh, email tends to be single channel focused. So we look at email, we send an email, we look at have they opened it, maybe we look at have they clicked on it, but we don't know what's happening outside of the email channel. So we don't know what's happening in sales, we don't know what's happened on our website, and it makes it very difficult to do that process of nurturing through the buying circle, uh, buying cycle. And you might see simplistic personalization like first name, but nothing beyond that really, because you're stuck in that silo of that one channel. And often that results in sending the same message to your entire audience with very little tailoring to their specific interests. It really feels as a user like you're being sold to. They're not considering the position of in the buying cycle, which ends up with the things like I just mentioned, where you get offers for something you've already bought, or you're wasting money spending advertising to advertise products they've already purchased. And quite often, people will receive your newsletter, and if it doesn't feel relevant to them, they'll just hit the spam button. It's so easy to do now, and that affects the, the deliverability of all of your email marketing. So even though you might have the software to do marketing automation, it's not the be-all and end-all. You do still have to have some element of strategy. You can't... Um, you can't kind of like automate your way out of a bad strategy. So you do still have to think about the customer all the way through the process. You do have to think about how can I automate this and how will this improve the process for my customers and reduce those friction points in the customer journey. So what we're talking about is how you can use technology to start thinking about that and start doing that. And you can talk about the personalization, uh, like in terms of the first name or maybe the, the preferences. Um, but actually, if you can go a lot further. And there was this uh, quote, and uh, maybe to give you some context, seven years ago, I started already on the concept of personalization as an engineer in Acquia Lift. Um, and yeah, back then, uh, like, what are we trying to figure out? All that kind of stuff. That's yeah, it was difficult. Even today, it's actually difficult. Eh? Um, if you already have a website, okay, fine. Then you have campaigns, then you have marketing campaigns. Like, then, like the last step um, is optimizing, and then personalization comes in. But if you get there, um, you're actually building those personas, and you're adding this emotional and behavioral component, and you get a lot closer to your end user or to the, the consumer, depending on who's your persona is, um, and it forms a connection, um, and that helps also to become a better brand or a, a better uh, experience in that sense for you and your consumer. And then the workshop. So um, I would advise all of you to take your laptop or maybe tag team along with someone that has one, uh, respecting distances and mat masks, please. Uh, this is the URL where you can go to, and you will actually get, get to see all these slides. Um, what we will do is we'll go through all these steps uh, but you can also do this on your own pace. Uh, one of us uh, will talk a bit about the steps and the other person will walk around to either guide you uh, through the steps. You don't need a local environment. You don't need DDEV or any of that stuff. We're using Gitpod, um, but we'll walk you through it. And the link will go on here. Yeah, it's also there. So what are we going to do? I showed you a little bit in the demo before. We're going to set up Drupal with the Umami profile. We're gonna add the capture script, as in the tracking script, to Drupal. The tracking script is from Motic to make sure that Motic knows who is visiting which pages and who are you, what is your location, uh, all of those things. Um, we're going to try to understand the intention. That means, uh, um, do you want to subscribe to that newsletter at the form? Uh, there's ways that you can go a lot further as in understanding intention, for example. Um, if you visit five vegan recipes and um, one uh, gluten something, uh, maybe there's like an assumption or you can make an assumption that you're interested in vegan recipes. But yes? Drupal DX 
Drupal PDX. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's all lowercase. Yes, yes, yes. Drupal PDX, yes, uh, all lowercase. So Adam, you said, see the form. The form comes from Matic. Uh, we're going to fill it in uh, with some random information. Um, um, and then it will be stored in Matic. That is called a conversion uh, for the marketing technology uh, words or buzzwords in that sense. And then we're going to send an email uh, personalized to their intention, which is vegan or gluten-free. So step one, set up Drupal. Um, this is the link. And maybe let me know, like, have you all have access to this to slides? Is uh, everyone uh, following along? So please go on your own pace. Uh, click on that link, and it will start Gitpod. Um, and what is Gitpod? Gitpod is um, an interactive development environment in your browser. Um, and you will see that it starts up a whole bunch of things after, like I think, a minute, uh, something like that. Um, it will set up everything um, up until the point that Drupal is running. Yeah, so uh, we'll walk you through it. So if you click on here, um, you will see normally this kind of interface. Maybe there's like a bunch of other models here and there. Um, let me maybe just make sure that this is empty. Once you have this up and running, you can actually uh, execute the DDEV commands. Maybe raise your hand um, if you're up and running and if you entered those three commands. If you have any issues, also like raise your hand and we'll walk around. Just for your information, there's a couple of other slides in there, which is called DDEV on your local host or even pure PHP. We're not going to use this in this workshop because then we're kind of assuming that you have a local environment and we didn't want to debug your computer in this session. Um, but if you do this at home, these are also instructions on how to set up uh, Drupal with these modules um, in, in a more local environment. Sorry? Oh, you have to log in with GitHub, yes. It's not because I'm from GitLab that you have to log in with GitLab. Yeah. I think if you don't have a GitHub account, it uh, might be better to tag team with someone and do this in a pair programming way. Um, or in general, I recommend to do this like with two people. Uh, Anyone need help? All good? Sorry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, yeah. So what, like once you have that up and running, uh, there's two commands that we will execute and that I suggest that you do or require that you do. Uh, it's the Matic Paragraph module. What does the Matic Paragraph module do? It um, uh, enables uh, a module to connect with Matic. Uh, so in Drupal, there's a form to put in login credentials, et cetera. We'll walk through, through that. Um, and that allows to make a connection between you know, which forms are available for me to show in Drupal. The asset injector, don't do this in production. This is actually like the, the dumbed down replacement of Google Tag Manager. Uh, it's, a, it's a way to put a script on a page. We'll just explain this, the Matic part, but you can do this in parallel. Eh? So um, do this on your own pace, don't worry. I'll walk around a bit. Yeah, okay. So. Drupal, uh, Mortic also has the ability to set up a Mortic instance using Gitpod, and we use that extensively for testing new features and bug fixes and things like that. So oh, I'm going to get down to the next slide. There we go. So um, if you click on this link in the slides, this will spin up an instance with our, not the release we did yesterday, but the release we did last, um, last month. 
and that will do exactly the same as what Nick just explained. It will spin up everything that is required to install Mortic, install all of the dependencies, install Mortic for you, set up a user that you can use to log in. So it takes about a minute-ish, depends on how busy the um, Git pod is, and you'll have the same kind of interface that you have with the Drupal instance. So you should have two browsers, one with Mortic, one with Drupal. Um, once you've done that, in the terminal window, so the same as you just did the Drupal commands, we're going to run these two commands. The first one basically regenerates some JavaScript and CSS to make sure you're on the latest versions. And the next one clears the cache just to make sure there's no problems with the, the cache in Mortic. And then you'll be able to log in. Um, it opens Mortic in a little window, but you can also click on the side. You've got a slide for that, haven't you, somewhere? Yeah, oh, here we go. So if you click on this icon on the side, which is Remote Explorer, looks like a computer, uh, and the 8080 port is the, the web interface, and there's an icon that looks like a globe. That will actually open Mortic in a separate tab, which is I find much easier to work with than in a tiny little simple preview browser. Yeah, same for same value for Drupal. So you'll also see some other ports here, which we'll talk about in a minute. So oh why can't I go down with the mouse? Oh, you're sl oh, Okay. Okay. And um, once you've got Mortic set up and running, is anyone up and running yet? Or in the process? Still waiting. Still waiting. You're up and running? OK. On the top right, there's a settings cog. If you click on that, we need to uh, turn off cause restrictions. So don't do this in production, but it just makes life a lot easier to do whilst we're doing demos. So you can do that by there it is. Go into the settings cog and then go to configuration cause settings and just turn that to no. Normally you would put all the domains in there that you want your Mortic tracking script to be allowed to show on um, so that you people don't put it on random sites. So we'll wait a bit until everybody's all done. Yeah. The majority is, is doing. Anyone need help or just waiting? Waiting for the thing to load? If you're already ready, don't wait for us. Just go through the slides yourself. Um, it's totally okay to be faster or slower in that sense. Eh? Um, I've been in workshops where indeed like you have to wait and wait and wait, and there's nothing more frustrating than that if you cannot do it on your own pace. Eh? So, Can maybe you raise your hand if the, both of the systems are up and running? Oh, because of the local Wi-Fi, yeah. Yeah, well, initially we did this with local composer and all that stuff, and that would have been even worse. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe that's why, like, if it really doesn't load, try to tag team up uh, or put the computer in the middle of the um, the table. So is it okay if I continue? Um, so if you have your Drupal URL uh, so with the little globe on the port 8080, um, you can log in. You had the command drush uli. Uh, for those that don't know, that generates a login URL. You can copy paste that into your uh, browser. Um, so I'll, I'll show you that here. So if you do, this is a little tiny, so I'll make it bigger. DDF Drush ULI gives you a link. If you copy paste that link, uh, you can actually log in to uh, your Drupal. 
So then uh, uh, we need to enable those two modules. It's called Motic Paragraph and the Asset uh, Injector. So you can do that here. Uh, so Motic, uh, you will see here. The Asset Injector, you can also see here. So please do that. And then um, we will add our tracking script. If you go to the configuration of the Asset Injector, um, you can press the plus button. And in Motic itself, there is a, a, a tracking script. Now, where do you find that tracking script? It's also here in the settings, here with configuration. And then there is uh, a thing called tracking settings, and there's like a script here. This is very similar to Google Analytics. Eh? So in Google Analytics, you do the same. You click the script, and you add it to Google Tag Manager. Similar here, if you have Google Tag Manager or something similar, you take this, you put it in there, and it's actually tracking you on the website. So. Um, that's what you should do as well. Um, and then you should have the Motic script in there. So please do that uh, right now. And maybe raise your hand if you're there. Like I think if like four or five people are at this step, we can continue or hopefully we can continue. Yeah. Sure. So where can you find the actual Motic script? That's the actual Motic script. That, or the, the, the big thing. Yeah, so here in settings, configuration, tracking settings, that's the script. You can see there's a bunch of options. Sorry? You don't need the script tags. Yeah, you don't need the script tags. Yeah, and then in Drupal itself, here with the assets injector, you will see a Motic script. And that's the exact same script that we add in there. So please raise your hand if, if you're there. For Motic, you need the, the um, Drush ULI command for that. So in, in the Git pods, uh, as I showed you here, you can execute this command, ddev drush uli. It will generate a URL, and just open that URL in your browser, and you will be logged in to Drupal. So one person is ready. What you did now, if, if you get there, is basically connected already the two systems. Right, so hooray, this is already a success, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. Wait a little bit more for more hands. Help is also fine, eh? If you need help. Admin yeah, so the username is admin and Motic. If that doesn't work, clear the cache according to that command. Um, Obviously, if we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, so. Obviously, if we're doing it in production, don't use admin Motic. Yes. We're omitting all privacy laws and all security uh, regulations here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you don't mind, I'll continue a bit. For those that are just following, um, that's also fine. So. Yes, so that's here in configuration. So in Motic, there's a little uh, cogwheel at the top, then configuration. So I'll, I'll leave this open, so here configuration. And on, on the left, you have this link called tracking settings. So here, so this is what you get if you log into Motic, right? Do you see this, or are you logged into Motic? Yes, so someone is coming to you. For those that, that need help, so here in the Git pod, if you uh, open it up, there's this remote explorer, and there, oh, you can open up a little globe next to the port 8080. You will get Motic, and then you can log in with admin Motic, okay? So what do we need to do now? Um, in Drupal itself, we have um, Motic normally 
as a web service integration. In my demo, this is already pre-filled, but I'll show you where you can get that information. So uh, go to that module configuration. And then um, again, in Matic, we go to that settings wheel. And we go to API credentials, and you can actually create a new OAuth2 key. You have to give it a name and a redirect URI. Now, what is that redirect URI? Um, and I can uh, show it here. The redirect URI is actually the, the web URL of your Matic. So in, in my case, um, oh sorry, of your Drupal. So in my case, this is this whole Gitpod URL where I, I'm logged into Drupal. And then um, it's called slash Matic slash callback. So you have to fill that in and click on save. And once you save that, you will see two keys, a public key and a secret key. Um, that's all you need then. And then we go to Drupal. So let's go here. And we fill in all that information. So we fill in, it's HTTPS. We fill in the link to Mautic. Um, we fill in the client ID and the secret. And then the base URL should already be pre-filled. This might be a bit tricky. The base URL is without HTTP or HTTPS and without the leading slash. Once you do that, you click on Save Configuration and you should see a green message, success. Please let us know if you see success or failure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe just to get some more insight in what are we doing here. So here we have our tracking script on, uh, on Drupal. So we can all track the anonymous contacts, as in all the anonymous people that come in uh, on our website. Here we do it for the, yeah, the web admin. And the connection actually goes to the, also the admin interface of Matic so that we know what kind of forms and what kind of information lives in Matic. Um, and to fast forward a little bit, um, and I'll, I'll show you here as well. So this is for the end of the, um, the demo as well, but I'm just gonna show you what that means. So um, there's a block that you can create, and the block says which form of Matic do I need to add to this block. Um, so this is the link that you just made. Because of the API credentials, you know which forms exist in Matic, okay? Um, I'm not gonna go too fast in that sense, because we'll get there in a bit. Maybe also please raise your hand if, uh, if you got there. If you're completely lost, also let me know, or us know. Anyone completely lost? Need some coffee? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Who's winning this race? No. Show you here. Yeah. This is how it looks like in my Drupal, and so it could help. The only thing that you don't see here is the client secret because it hides that in there. Um, Matic itself sends the emails. 
So Motic is a marketing automation software tool, and um, it's a bit too much for a session of 50 minutes to, to show how that works. Um, but it has an um, email builder. And I'll show you in here. So you can actually change all these things. So similar to MailChimp, but with a whole campaign uh, management next to it. Um, and then the, the great thing is that it's integrated to Drupal. So the forms that MailChimp makes, they have to do like all these kind of like embedding and it's, it's tricky and then suddenly you have to make the CSS colors and all that stuff. Um, this is a more integrated way. Um, and also fully open source, fully in your control, could be fully on premise in that sense. Yes. And you can also use SMS if you needed to send text messages, you could do browser notifications, yep. you can do personalized pop ups and messages on the website, any other channel you wanted, WhatsApp. Yeah, so for um, in, in the case of Drop Solids, uh, there was a customer with, I think, 200,000 emails a month. Um, all of the, the customers that we service with Motic uh, were sending all the emails to SendGrid, which is an SMTP yeah, service with a dedicated IP that you need to do warm up. So everything that's also valid for emails, sending emails, usually you offload that to a service like SendGrid or similar. Uh, I think MailJet is, or there's like a couple of others, right? Amazon SES. Yeah. Uh, so Motic will not solve your deliverability problem. Um, it can send really nice emails and marketing campaigns and the tracking and, and the whole management around it. There are loads of videos on our YouTube channel that talk about how to use There's lots of videos on the YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com slash c slash Mautic org, which talk about how to warm up your list properly, how to do re-engagement campaigns, all those kind of things. So if you're kind of new to how marketing automation works, it can give you some really good like real life examples of how people are using it to drive their business growth. So yeah, but in, we don't have enough time to go through the whole shebang, so. <laughs> Yeah, so Motic has a plugin system, and you can even connect it to Zapier, for example. And then from Zapier, you can even go to Google Spreadsheets, if that's a channel that you use, right? So um, it's kind of limitless in that sense. Uh, and you can see these are the, the basic plugins that exist, also in your Motic, in, in this case, uh, in the Gitpod. Um, but Zapier or similar integration hub, um, yeah, alike tools are really powerful to go to, for example, Microsoft Dynamics. And uh, that's also a channel in a way, like how to get more information from your contact in Motic or from Motic to Dynamics. This takes us a bit too far for this session, um, but there's a lot of information on the Motic website. Mm -hmm. Or you can contact me at the IP address. Yeah. yeah. Right. Even MailChimp is a, a like a valid connection in a way because it could be that the organization already uses MailChimp. Maybe you're adding Motic because of the marketing automation uh, campaigns and all that stuff. But where does that contact live? Uh, what's your single source of truth for that contact? So you want to synchronize uh, the data fields from that same contact from uh, Nick uh, working at uh, GitLab. I do it in MailChimp. It actually goes to Motic and vice versa. And so that's uh, a really important yeah, key. Part. Anyone already connected? Okay.
Yeah. I'll just say that for the recording. So can Mortic be used in, in like as a replacement for analytics as a tracking tool? Yes and no. The reporting is not amazing in Mortic, so it will tell you the pages people are accessing, the assets that they're downloading, the resources they're interacting with. It will tell you the emails they're opening, things like that. Um, if you wanted to do like an analytics-y type thing, you probably would want to use something like Metabase or another tool to actually interrogate the data. We, are, we have got a project uh, towards the end of this year to improve the reporting and analytics in Mortic. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's like a replacement for Google Analytics, but it depends on what you actually need to get out of the information. If you literally just need to know what pages are my contacts accessing on the website, then yes, you could. And But you have to have the appropriate consent from the user to use that trackable cookie. So when you put the tracking code on the website, the tracking part of it has to be consented. But to put the forms on your website, that's mandatory code because you have to have that code on there for the website. So you have to bear that in mind that you do have to consent people properly if you're using the, the tracking code. Make sense? Should we go on? Yeah. yeah I think from, from here we're going to go a bit faster in a sense just to give you like the broader view, um, but please, like if you have time during the day, follow the instructions uh, further. Um, otherwise, we might not uh, give you enough information today to like keep on going. Eh? Um, so we're gonna add the newsletter block or uh, add a newsletter, create a newsletter uh, form uh, to subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, we're gonna create a block in Drupal and pull in that form um, and then show it on the page. Okay, so in your Mortic instance, on the right-hand side in the settings menu, you'll have an option for custom fields. This is really powerful because it allows you to create whatever fields you need on the contact or the company profile to meet your business needs. So in this case, we're looking at having a custom field that lets people tell us what information they want to receive on the email, that whether they want to receive recipes that are tailored to vegan, tailored to gluten-free, and so forth. So if you go to settings and custom fields and create a new custom field and choose contact, you'll notice that you can choose contact or companies in the drop down. And we're going to choose select multiple. And then beneath it, the yellow button lets you add the choices. So you have the label and then you have what's stored in the database. So I've put two here, but you could just have vegan. In the business context, this could be like, what are you interested in in our services, for example. The powerful thing about this is on the right-hand side, you'll notice some options. We can segment, which means create lists based on the values here. We can show them on forms. We can um, allow them to be updated through the tracking script on our website if we want to, so we can push information into that JavaScript and actually push this information into the customer profile. So it's super powerful. So have a go at creating custom field. Anyone managed to get that far? Yeah? And what we're going to do now is create a form that allows people to give us their first name, their email address, and that custom field we just created. So on the left-hand side, under components, if I can get the Mautic instance up, I can show you. Under components, you've got forms. And we're going to create a new form. And we're going to add some fields to the form. So the fields that we're going to add are text fields. So for name and email address, we want to add a text field. Okay. So to do that, go to fields. And in this dropdown, it gives you all the different types of fields that you could use on your form. Generally speaking, for anything that you want content-wise, you're looking at text or text area. Text area is like a bigger, bigger size field. So we're going to add a text field for first name. And we've just called it first name. You can show or not show the label. We want to save the result, which means save it to the customer's profile. Um, and in the contact field, this allows us to say that the text that's entered in here relates to the first name field on the contact. So when they fill in the form, it will push that information into their contact record. Because initially, as soon as they land on the website, they're an anonymous visitor. We only know their IP address. We don't know anything about them. 
when they fill in this form, we now know their first name, their email address, and their preference. So that's all we're going to set for this one, first name. You can also set under validation, is it a required field? And that will put the, you know, the asterisk and make it a required field in MOTIC. You can style the fields appropriately, however you want it to. And you can also auto-fill the data. If you know the information about the customer, then you can have that field automatically populated so they don't have to create it again. Obviously, you have to think about that because if you have lots of people on the same IP, it could get confusing. But generally speaking, um, you would leave that off unless there's a good reason to use it. And we'll do the same for the email field. We'll pair it up with the contact field of email. And we can make this required if we want to, to say you actually have to fill it in because otherwise we can't subscribe you to the newsletter, for example. And for the other one, when we create that, rather than a text field, we're going to choose the select, select option, which is this one here, just under radio button. And that allows us to uh, create a, a drop-down or a multi-select field. We're going to pair it up with the interested in custom field, which we just created. And with this kind of field, you can either create fi um, options here, or you can say, use what I just set up in the custom field. For me, that's usually a better option, because then you have less mistakes likely to happen. So if you set this to yes, it means use what I've just set in the custom field. And if you set this one to yes, it means let them choose more than one option. So sometimes in a drop down, you might just want to have one. Other times, you might want them to be able to choose more than one. So that's what we need to do when we create the field. Just to mention the other options here, disable from in indexing means that it tries to stop search engines accessing this form. And kiosk mode, if you're at an event like this and you're taking registrations on the stand, you don't want to associate that contact with the IP address of the expo. So if you set that to yes, it won't save the IP address when they save the form. We're almost out of time, but hopefully some people uh, got here. So this is what we explained. And then in Drupal itself, you can click on the place block, um, add a custom block, and in the Motic block, because it's a type, you should be able to find your form. Um, so then you see a wonderful newsletter full of recipes. Um, you can place it then somewhere in Drupal. And then uh, what you will get is uh, this, as we showed you here as well. So if you go down, you will see the form. Maybe a, a bit of nuance, like, oh, I can do this with web form as well. Yes, you could. Um, and there is a way to connect it, but then the, the question is like, should your content editor create these marketing forms? Is the content editor a different persona than the one that actually does the marketing automation? Um, so this kind of like separates those concerns. Um, in, in the cases of uh, Drop Solid, this was very interesting because web forms and multilingual and configuration, all that kind of stuff, all the complexity is gone. Um, so forms are edited in Mautic, uh, content edited as it is edited in Drupal. Now, in, in the sake of time, um, we'll quickly guide you through the rest that you can do yourself because I think we have to finish, right? Um, so you can create segments in Motic um, and then with Campaign Builder. I will just show you that Campaign Builder um, once more. And what the Campaign Builder does is if someone signs up, as you saw, um, you can create these uh, wonderful charts and you can drag it. Uh, so if someone signs up, then add it to the segment. And maybe after the segment, I want to do another action and say, like, maybe send an email to that person. You subscribe to the newsletter. So that's, that's possible. So you can create these really complicated flowcharts here in Mautic. Um, and this is a lot harder to do in web forms if you want to do all of that in web forms. That doesn't mean that web form is a bad module, not at all. Um, but for the persona that does the marketing and the marketing automation, this might be like a good separate UI to do all of that separate from Drupal. Okay. And then if everything goes well, you do all of these things. Come find us after this session. Yeah. Um, you can actually capture that person. You sign up. And then it's a bit tricky for this demo. In production, you have cron jobs that process all these campaigns. Um, so you can do this in the Git pods. 
Um, if you do this in production, you should like have these cron jobs that make sure that every time someone fills in a form, the campaign is run after a couple of minutes to understand like, what is the next step for this person. Um, so that's exactly what you do here. Creating a newsletter was also part of the demo, um, but we don't have time to do the newsletter, right? Yeah, we'll show you the. Yes, and the slides are all the steps for newsletter. So I'll show you a little bit here. So in um, maybe you can do the the email explanation. Yep, so in Mautic we have an email builder and we have some default templates. So, so these templates are nice and fancy and pretty. Uh, truly personal is just like an email that you would be sending to a contact. So it's very, very basic. But we're going to use Paprika. Um, under the hood, this uses MJML to create fully responsive emails that are compatible with all um, uh, clients. So it puts all the code in for Outlook and Internet Explorer and Yahoo and all the other random things that people use nowadays. This is what the builder looks like. So you have the ability to preview your um, email in mobile to see what it will look like. And it uses uh, Grapes.js, which is an open source framework. So you can also build on this and customize the blocks yourself. Uh, and then down the bottom here, we have uh, all of these blocks you can just drag in and move them into wherever you want to add a text block and then click and edit. Yeah, and you have your editor here. So it's very easy to use. It's a very easy onboarding process for your um, marketers. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to scroll. I don't know why. Um, and then what you can do with um, what, what we were just talking about in terms of inserting dynamic content is we can create some default content. This will go to anyone who we don't have preferences for, and they will receive whatever we put here. So we could just put any old recipe. And then we have the ability here to say, I want you to use this variation if these things are met. So down the bottom we have filters. So you could say if they're in this city, or if they have this interest, or if they, any of the custom fields basically that you've created. So what did you call your? Interested in, there we go. But it could be like if they have a high number of points, so they're really engaged with your brand, send them this. If they're the CMO, send them this. If they're a marketing assistant, send them this. So you could do it on job title. Um, what we do then is we would call this vegan recipe or whatever. So anyone who is in the vegan group would receive this variant. So they wouldn't receive default they would receive the vegan content. Anyone who was in gluten-free, for example, or was including gluten-free, they would receive the, glu the gluten-free variant that we create. So it can be really powerful. You can do this in whatever way is relevant for your business. You can include images, content, links, whatever you want to change out sections of the, um, of the email automatically. So you then don't have to send multiple emails. You send one with blocks of it that change based on what you know about the customer. And what that looks like when you do that sending. In Gitpod, you also have um, MailHog, which is, is it AT27? MailHog is a tool that you can use to capture the outgoing emails if you're working in development locally. And it means that you can send emails and they'll get caught here and you can check them and make sure that they're all okay. So you can access that by going to 8027, and then when we send an email, we'll see it in MailHog and we'll be able to interrogate them. Can I send this one or? Okay. There are no pending contacts. We'd need to add some contacts. Okay. So this is what it would look like in Gitpod. You'd be able to see it. You can open it. And if I scroll down, we'll see the default content here because we're not in any of the segments. We're just sending this to a test user. 
And what it would look like if you were in one of those segments is you'd receive the variant. So, for example, this was a test one that was in the vegan section, and they received the vegan um, recipes in that block. This one is in the normal section, doesn't have vegan as a preference. They receive the regular recipes in that block. You can do the same thing with your website with dynamic content as well. You could take it as also a step further. Matic has support for tokens. A token could be also um, programmed in, in a way that it fetches content from somewhere. So um, we had a case where we put in, it was not recipes, but like articles that were specific to a specific person. Um, and the email was filled with these yeah, highly personalized articles coming from Drupal. So the token had uh, a processor that went to Drupal, to an API endpoint from Drupal, and said, like, give me those articles from these filters, like a view, it was just a view. Um, and then with uh, JSON API, it fetches it, we processed it in Motic, and those emails, the newsletters were highly personal, and all of the content came from Drupal. Um, so this is a really, really great use case. Um, DropSolid is looking into um, yeah, contributing that, that token plugin, or I'm not entirely sure how they did that, uh, back somewhere. Um, but you can see how these two could have like a really great marriage in, in a way. Trying to do this in MailChimp, for example, or even in HubSpot, creates a really, really big complexity. How do you get that content nicely styled in those tools? That's tricky, right? Um, that was drop solid. And now everybody here was successfully doing all this demo and you have it all locally. Hooray, well done you. <laughs> yes. So in closing. Yeah, so hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight into some of the things that you can do and at least this, the tools that you need to have a poke about with these two technologies locally. One thing to mention with Gitpod is if you don't use it for a period of time, it will go inactive, but you can just press open workspace and it will spin it up again. Uh, it will be valid for 14 days, I think, unless you pin it, and then they'll delete the workspace. So just be aware of that. Um, if you have any questions, you can follow up with me um, on the Acquia booth or Nick on Twitter. And Maltic is an open source project. We have a very young and growing community. We have five teams, and we welcome contributions in any of them. So community, education, Legal and finance is the one that nobody actually cares about, so that tends to be just me. Um, marketing and product. So yeah, we're doing sprints. We had our first Drup uh, Mautic developer days at, at Drupal developer days. We had six rather than 336 people, but it was six amazing people, and we got loads of work done on our Symfony migration. So because the tech stacks are very similar, they're both based on Symfony, it is quite easy, I think, for people to start picking up uh, a Mautic if you're already familiar with Drupal. So if you're interested in finding out more, contributing, getting to know a bit more about Mautic, do come and chat with us. And yeah, drop us a line if you have any questions. Sorry, it's been a bit of a whistle-stop tour. It wasn't really long enough for an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what we got, so. Yeah, we did know the workshop was an hour. We thought it was two hours. Yeah, for those that want to ask questions, we do have some time. Don't feel obligated or like um, just to sit around. Go ahead. Um, Matic is actually uh, storing all the contacts in in this case. So, um, well, usually because of the tracking script is Matic, all of the, the contact or all of the information is in Matic. It doesn't have to be in the sense that you can integrate with Dynamics, for example, Microsoft Dynamics or Salesforce, and you synchronize those contacts between those two systems. Uh, Microsoft Dynamics or Salesforce, like if you want to do it directly, then you don't, or you cannot use Matic because then Salesforce needs to do the forms and Salesforce needs to do the tracking script and all that stuff, like the direct connection. Um, and that poses a lot of other challenges.
in, yeah, so there's multiple ways to get to Rome in that sense. Uh, so uh, Matic has indeed dynamic content, um, even has um, focus items as in like, oh, if you're that uh, criteria, then oh, show a pop-up and the pop-up actually comes from Matic. You could also say smart content in that way and show uh, only this form if that criteria is done because it's a Drupal block. Um, and then, for example, for Drop Solids, they have Apache Unomi uh, as the CDP, which is a content or like a customer data platform, um, which also has like segmentations and also allows for specific content to be shown on your Drupal site based on specific information from the user. And then Matic is purely used as marketing automation. And that's this is what it's called the DXP. It's you have a CMS. There's marketing automation. There's a customer data platform and then potentially CRM, and you tie all of those things together, and that's what one would call a DXP. Um, you could either buy all of that from Acquia, or buy all of that from Pantheon, or do all of that yourself on-premise with all open source tools, and that's a bit what we're showing here as well. Does that make sense? It's a traditional LAMP stack. Um, and it's actually more lightweight than Drupal, from what I, mm -hmm. like. Uh, yeah, it, it really depends what you're gonna be doing with it, because Mautic in itself can run on a relatively small, we do recommend VPS, at least a VPS, not shared hosting. Um, it, in itself, it can run on a pretty small droplet. You don't need a massive amount of resources. If you start sending huge volumes of email, so over, 50 to 100K regularly. It's not so much the sending of the email that is resource intensive. It can be space intensive if you're using queuing. Um, it's more like when the email lands with the person, it's the clicks that are coming back on the emails that you're reading, all of the opens and the reads, and all of that traffic is coming back to your server. So that's where you tend to hit into needing to have a fairly beefy server as soon as you start to scale. Uh, it is something we're working on, and in Mautic 5, we're looking at moving to Symfony Messenger rather than Swift Mailer, which will have queuing by default. We'll use Redis, probably, so that you can use Mautic out of the box just as it comes for your basic instance. But as soon as you get to a certain point, you actually need to have some technical chops to install and configure these extra tools that you need to manage those queues, because that's where people find the performance challenges. Yeah. Yeah, and, and at that point, usually people are like, either I need to invest in the uh, infrastructure and people in-house to manage that infrastructure, or I'm like, screw that, can't be bothered, who can do this for me? And they go to like Acquia or Web Mechanic or Drop Solid or one of our partners. Um, if you go to the Mautic website, we've got a tab at the top for partners. There are people who f financially support the community and practically support the community with contributions. So those are the people who are like building the community and a lot of them provide SaaS services or they provide hosted, solu hosted support, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, generally speaking, that's probably a good idea because you may well need to scale up Mautic and your website's perfectly fine. So you don't want to have to scale both. It's better to have them in, in separate places. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm running Drupal on a heavy HTTPS function from uh, Jack's website. Yeah. And so Drupal is giving me the best build. But other than that, that's that's how I'm running it. Is Modic set up to have an API and also can Spine Shot a if I have a Spine Shot app? Is where my knowledge of it is. Sure. Yeah, so the tracking script will work regardless on which website it is. It doesn't have any opinion on if it's a Drupal or WordPress or Joomla or whatever. Um, and the only thing that the Drupal module does is actually um, this. So there, in the form itself, there is a, a JavaScript script to show the form. So if Gatsby just somehow like uh, understands either from Drupal or from the backend JavaScript that connects with Mautic or any of that stuff and find out, okay, what's the injection script for this form? Totally fine. Um, the only disadvantage, uh, there's a Gatsby integration. Yeah, that's what I wasn't sure. Um, so yeah. And we do have a, a REST API as well. Yeah. 
yeah, that's how the Drupal gets all the information. Okay. Please let us know on Twitter or something that you succeeded uh, or successfully finished the whole um, instructions. This is the homework. It actually goes like a, a lot further. Uh, but there was too much for this uh, workshop. Thank you.